thank you all for coming tonight. For those who don't know a whole lot about me, I'll tell you a secret after I heard all these wonderful candidates. I actually was not born in Pennsylvania. I was born in Alabama because my father was in the Army. And so I'm sort of an Army brat. He didn't spend a long time there. We, I grew up outside of Philadelphia, but I actually am an Alabama man, and native because my dad was uh, serving his country. It was during the Korean War when he was stationed in Huntsville, <coughs> Alabama. I'm now a Navy mom. Now, my dad was in the Army nuclear program, and my son is currently a Navy nuke. And so when my father was still alive, they used to argue about whose nuclear program was better. My son won because the Army evidently doesn't have a nuclear program anymore, and the Navy does. So uh, it's been just a little fun fact. Uh, I have been married for 39 years. My husband and I are the proud parents of six children. They are all girls, except for five of them. <laughs> uh, just a little bit of background on me. I did work uh, with President Reagan's administration. The president had a commission on the family, and I was one of the advisors to that commission. I was a founder of the Pennsylvania Leadership Conference, which we all just got to attend this weekend. I was a founder of the Pennsylvania Family Institute. I am also the architect behind the homeschooling law in Pennsylvania. So if you homeschooled your children, you're welcome, because I'm the reason you got to do that. talking about me, however. I want to talk about you. A couple of weeks ago, I was talking to a bunch of high school students, and they very seriously asked me, Dr. Luxick, is there such a thing as an American culture? And they weren't kidding, and they weren't being flipped. They were very serious. And when I began to answer, they all leaned forward, because they really wanted to know. In fact, there is such a thing as an American culture. And it begins with the fact that each of you is a created being. And because you are created, you have rights. You don't have rights because you believe to a, one group or another group, and you don't have to fight each other for rights. You were created with them. And the most fundamental of those rights is your right to live, to exist. Because if the government can tell any of us that we don't have a right to our own existence, they can tell all of us that we don't have a right to our own existence. That's why abortion is the issue that never goes away. Because it is the most fundamental of our rights. And your right to life began from the moment of your conception, when that creator called you into being. It continues into your right to liberty. And that moves to your right to defend yourself from aggression. The Pennsylvania Constitution is way better than the federal constitution. Because the Pennsylvania Constitution says your right to bear arms shall not be questioned. <coughs> it's a blanket statement that your right to self-defense from aggression is God-given. It's not a gift from the government. It also means that we are a nation of laws. We're not a democracy, all due respect to all the uh, mainstream media commentators who keep trying to proclaim us as one. We are, in fact, a republic. And that means we are a nation of laws. And the law must apply equally to all of us. Illegal immigration is, by definition, illegal immigration. <laughs> and so by enforcing our laws, we are, in fact, guaranteeing the freedom of each and every one of us, including those who came to this country by following the rules. And we need to honor their obedience and their compliance to this American culture as well. It means you have the right to pursue happiness, and that begins with education. Our schools are not workforce development centers where little pieces of human capital are trained for a job that was pre-selected for them by a data mining process that began when they were infants. Our schools are supposed to be academic institutions where precious children are given the knowledge and the, the understanding and appreciation of America's heritage that they need to become the person that they were created to be. Common Core has to go. <laughs> to hold on to the fruits of your own labor. Property taxes are, are an antiquated and arcane system. It is the only system in this country in which if you owe a $4,000 tax bill, the government seizes a $53,000 home. Who thought that was fair? 
That is a system that needs to end immediately. And there can't be any compromise, and there can't be any delay. <laughs> it continues with your right to interact with the creator who gave you rights. Isn't it a shame that in so many places in this country, people are allowed and even encouraged to kneel in disrespect for our flag and forbidden to kneel in respect for the creator who made them and endowed them with their rights? You know, if there is no creator, you're not endowed. It is as simple as that. That continues with your right to your conscience. The Pennsylvania Constitution says that no human authority should force someone to violate the dictates of their own conscience, whether that's baking a cake or participating in an abortion. We talk a lot about tolerance. Isn't it a shame that we don't extend it to those who want just to live according to their own sincerely held religious beliefs? Now, interestingly, government doesn't have any rights. Government has responsibilities. And they only have the authority that we give them to honor those responsibilities. Which means there should be no secret government funds and no stealth government taxes. And every penny that is budgeted should go to what it is budgeted for. President Reagan used to say, freedom is a pass down in our bloodstream. We have to defend it. We have to teach it to the next generation. Well, the first step in defending freedom is proclaiming it without anger, without malice, but without apology. I have spent 30 years doing that. The lieutenant governor is the second highest office in the state. What a platform to pro proclaim the freedoms upon which this country was built. All due respect to many and several of my opponents, but the lieutenant governor works with the governor, but the lieutenant governor doesn't work for the governor. Like every elected official, the lieutenant governor works for you and should be chosen by you. And if you humbly, I humbly ask you to honor me with your vote on May 15th so that I can proclaim the freedoms that made America great so that we can continue to have a country that our children can thrive in. Thank you so much.